Hi friends, today let us understand how to design or what do you mean by infinite impulse response filters. So we are going to see what do you mean by infinite impulse response filters. These filters are well known as I, I, R, I of infinite, I of impulse and R of response. So they are very much well known about IIR filters. Now as the name itself suggests that its impulse response will be infinite. Let us take an example. If I say H of N is equal to A raised to N U of N. This filter response is infinite because as n will start increasing, okay, and if a is greater than 1, then this function is going to take infinite values. If a is less than 1, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on, then this function will go on decreasing. But it will also have a large number of n values or it will take a large number of n values to decrease to 0. So infinite impulse response will be having many values or infinite value into its transfer function. Now how to design these filters which are having infinite response itself. So we do not use a special methodologies or we do not incorporate special methods of designing impulse uh, infinite impulse response filters. Rather what we do is we take the help of analog filters. Infinite impulse response filters are digital filters. So ultimate goal is to get, so this is my ultimate goal and the goal is to get or design a digital filter. So I wanted to design a digital filter that is the ultimate goal. But what I will do is I will use the theory of analog filters which is well described and have a lot of huge amount of literature. So we will be using analog filter theory and designing a digital filter. Then how to bridge the gap between this analog to digital filter is what we will understand in this module. So we need to actually bridge the gap of how to design a digital filter from an analog filter. To bridge the gap, what I will do is I will map the characteristics of analog filter to the digital filter. So we will be doing a mapping, what we called as a mapping. So I will be mapping the analog filter onto digital filter. Okay, now analog systems works in Laplace plane. So they work in Laplace plane or we say they are S is equal to J omega plane. Okay, uh, pardon me, I should not write this omega. So let us say S is equal to J omega. This omega I will be referring for analog frequencies. Whereas digital filter operates in or digital system operates in Z domain. So this is Z domain. This is Laplace domain. Now Z is nothing but E raised to J omega where here omega stands for digital frequency. Now this uh, with the consideration that sigma over here is 0 and the magnitude over here is 1. If sigma is not 0 over here then S will be S is equal to sigma plus j omega and here if magnitude is not 1 then it will be r e raised to j theta. So I will have in general S plane to be equal to sigma plus j omega and I will have z is equal to r e raised to j omega where this omega stands for analog frequency and this omega stands for 
digital frequency. The unit of this omega is radians per second, whereas units for this omega is radians. Limits onto this omega is from minus infinity to infinity. Limits on this omega is from minus pi to pi. So you can see the differences. Here we are in analog domain, here we are in digital domain. Di uh, analog domain frequency is, is measured as radians per second, whereas digital frequency is in radians. The limit on frequency in uh, S domain or analog domain is minus infinity to plus infinity, whereas for a Z domain it is from minus pi to plus pi. And I wanted to devise a mechanism through which I can bring the frequency of analog to uh, the uh, digital filter. There is one more very important concept in the Laplace domain or in the S domain is the stability of the system. The stability of the system in is this domain is in the S plane if I see this is my minus sigma and this is my j omega axis and this plane is called as the S plane. The stability criteria says that for the system to be stable the poles must be on the right hand side sorry left hand side of the S plane. That means the pole can lie anywhere in this side of the g omega axis which is called as the left side of the g omega axis. The poles which are lying on j omega axis are called as marginally stable whereas the poles lying on the left or uh, right hand side are called as the unstable poles. So we have stable region, we have marginally stable that is border and then we have unstable region. Here in the z plane the stability criteria is a bit different. The Z domain is a circular domain. We will, we will all be working in the circular regions. So in Z domain, I will be operating on a circular plane and there is a very important circle which we called as a unit circle where the radius is equal to 1. And the stability criteria in this situation is the poles must be inside the unit circle for a causal system. The poles must be inside anywhere inside the unit circle. That systems are called as stable which are on the unit circle are marginally stable and which are outside the unit circle are unstable. Now when I'm designing a digital filter using an analog filter then I must take care of the stability factor. I must take care that whichever systems are stable in analog domain should remain stable in the digital domain also which demands that the poles on the left hand side of the S plane must be mapped into the unit circle. Whereas the poles on the g omega axis must be on the unit circle and the poles are which are on the right hand side must be outside the unit circle. That means unstable system will result into unstable system, stable system will result into stable system. So my mapping technique should take care of all this stuff. So my mapping technique must follow. So I will be going from this, uh, this plane to this plane through a mapping technique and what are those mapping let us, let us see later. Now we have understood that I will be using S plane and I will be using Z plane and I will be doing some mapping of points from S plane to Z plane and once that mapping is done I have done with my digital filter design. My mapping technique should follow certain conditions and with that conditions only if uh, is satisfied then my digital filter will be a successful 
conversion okay so let us understand uh, or but let us uh, jot down that what i what are my consideration is the first consideration was poles in the lhs of s plane must be mapped to poles uh, inside unit circle of z plane second consideration was uh, poles on j omega axis must be mapped onto unit circle of z plane third uh, poles on rhs of s plane must be mapped uh, to or mapped outside the unit circle of z plane right so these are the three basic consideration that we need to satisfy uh, or uh, the mapping technique must satisfy uh, to get a successful digital filter based on this three consideration we have two mapping techniques one is we called as impulse invariance method this is one and second we called as by linear transformation method so this is called as i i m method and this is called as b l t method so we'll be looking into these two methods one is called as i i m method or impulse invariance method uh, and the second one is called as b l t method or bilinear transformation method these two mapping techniques uh, are used widely there are many others but we will be focusing on these two methods because they are widely used so every iir filter will be designed from an analog filter but by applying a mapping to it so if i apply a mapping to an analog filter i will get a digital filter this will be the process for designing of iir filters thank you